Joining me today is Sipe Sihle Mtembu, who is a junior project engineer at Sanrel here in the Eastern region. Good morning, Sipe Sihle. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning and thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Now, let me start by saying congratulations. You won a SICE award as a junior project engineer. Take me through the background of how you as Sipe Sihle Mtembu became a project engineer. Definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, I joined Sandral as a passer. I happened to receive a passer in my third year at the University of KwaZulu Natal. And then I joined Sandral as a junior project engineer. I started at the Technical Excellence Academy, where I trained as a project manager in training. And then five years later, I joined permanently Sandral as a junior project engineer. Wow, that sounds very inspiring. Sipe Sihle, now you were involved in a very big project, the repairs on the Mtlali River Bridge. Can you give us a background scope of work that took place in repairing this bridge? Yes, definitely. Um, so basically what happened is on the year 2022, we received some big floods. Uh, so the bridge happened to overtop. And during the flooding, and also the bridge shifted or dislocated from its original position. So what happened is we had to take the bridge back to its original position, vertically as well as horizontally. So um, also uh, we had to change the bridge bearings. Um, of course, using the, the cultural specification because on that project, uh, it was a, a sort of a unique uh, or rare project. Uh, on the specification, if, it, if you can refer to it, you will hardly find the specification that speaks to checking the bridge horizontal. So the, the engineer had to come up with a new specification or amend the contract or amend the specification. Now, this sounds like a very complicated project and the fact that the bridge, if I'm not mistaken, is located on the N2, correct? Definitely. And also, Sentinel had given the project engineers a very specific timeline. How was it possible to do so without compromising on the quality of the work? Uh, so basically on the contract, we had uh, NIDO Consulting, which is a consultant that has been involved in many of the Sandal re rehabilitation projects, uh, where they repair bridges and so on and so on. So they, um, the, the staff that was working on that project was um, uh, staff with a massive or vast experience, of course, so they had to work for um, over hours I mean, to come up with a repair solution. So the fact that the bridge is on such a busy highway, the N2, how did this affect the communities that use this road? Okay, uh, basically because the traffic had to be shifted to a southbound direction, so we had to close one side of the carriageway. So basically uh, the motorist has to queue up to pass through the section where uh, the bridge was uh, uh, demolished, uh, but uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, as a result, uh, uh, I mean, motorists has to wait for such a long time. I mean, trying to pass through the construction site. Sandra had to open the toll gate uh, to run uh, or open freely for vehicles to move freely. As a result, um, the consulting team had to speed up the process of coming up with the design. Of course, so they worked over, over hours, of course, and, and put also on their team a very competent team, which include the professional uh, civil engineers. Nice. Okay. So how long did this project take? Yes, initially, uh, of course, uh, uh, due to its emergency. Yes. So we had to respond very, uh, with immediate effect or very quickly. As the, as the client. So the project itself took uh, around about four months to, to complete the project. So the duration of the project was four months. Of course, because of the team that was on the ground, yes. even the contractor, the team Langen, and the NIDO consulting, uh, which made it possible to actually uh, complete just the, the construction or duration in time.
So is this something that has ever been done before? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, having been involved or in, not having been involved in many of the standard projects, uh, I've never, I've never uh, heard of uh, such a great uh, initiative or great project. So absolutely not. Absolutely not. And for it to have been such a great project with so much innovation behind it, I'm sure there were a lot of risks as well. Definitely, definitely. Because these projects are involved jacking the bridge mm -hmm. vertically and horizontally. So the contractors team, we had to make sure that the contractors or labor are people who have a certification in, in terms of working on, on height itself. So also we had uh, the we applied for a special uh, emergency to a DFFA, Department of Environmental Affairs, which um, gave us a special permission or authority to, to work on site. So that now and again came, now and again they will come to site to do inspection to ensure that everything we are doing um, doesn't um, involve uh, damaging the environment. Yes. yes. So this was a first of its kind, very innovative, also very risky. How did you as Sipesitle test that this bridge was ready? I was definitely, as a project engineer, of course, a project uh, manager, of course, I was the first one to actually uh, drove on the bridge wow. itself. So it was very uh, fascinating. And uh, after a, a, a sort of a couple of months, uh, getting sort of a frustration from the uh, the commuters uh, and the motorists. And I remember the moment because, I mean, on that day uh, when we had the minister coming to visit or uh, visit the site and open the bridge, uh, we received a, a, a very warm welcome from the motorist. Uh, so every vehicle that was passing, yeah, so they would give us a hood nice. uh, to say, ah, thank you, Sandra, because they have been uh, undergo undergoing through this a uh, frustrating period where they had to use the one carriageway to pass over the bridge. So, yeah. Sipe Sitle, now I'm not sure when the bridge was originally constructed. And now that the repairs have been done, how are you going to ensure that this doesn't happen again? Oh, yes, definitely. What we did on that bridge is we uh, introduced a breeder hose, okay. right? Breeder hose basically, uh, because that bridge, uh, when during the floods, also succumb to a buoyancy. So in, that means uh, now, if the bridge had the same floods, at least the water will find a way through. Oh. Drilling the breeder holes, of course, will uh, decrease the, the severity of buoyancy force during the floods. Okay. Sipe yes. Sile, thank you once again for joining me today and congratulations one more time on your SICE award. I think your story is very inspiring for what you've achieved in the past five years. So we wish you all the best in the future. Thank you so much. And that of course was Sipe Sile Mtembu, who is a junior project engineer at Sanral in the Eastern region.